Aloha, and welcome to the Condo Insider Show, where we discuss all things related to condo living. Today, our discussion will shed light on the arbitration and mediation process to help facilitate various dispute resolutions. As our guest today, we have Jane Sugimura, a, our condo insider and expert to share with us how to navigate these options designed to serve the industry to avoid lawsuits. Welcome back, Jane. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Always a pleasure. Um, <clears throat> I know that many um, condo associations and homeowner associations, you're going to find this as a shocker, but they rarely get into disputes. Oh, no. <laughs> No, right, that's, 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 we, we know right well, off that. We know that that's not true. Yeah, that There's, there, are, there are always disputes. And, I, you know, what, I, what, I, what we usually tell boards when, we, when, when that issue comes up is, you know, the way to avoid disputes is to talk to people. Right. Even if they're angry. Because if you don't talk to them, they get worse. They get angrier. Yeah, it doesn't and they, go away. And they, they start, you know, writing letters uh, first to the board and then to the other owners. And then you get petitions and then you get a, a lawsuit, you know, so it, it just escalates. And it so does. my, yeah, my advice is, you know, to the board, that you don't ignore the people who are complaining. Exactly. You need to acknowledge, they, they need to be acknowledged to know that somebody's listening to them and doing something. Yeah. Address, and if you can't do anything, you have to tell them. Uh, well, you know, we really, you know, aren't, don't have, you know, a, a, an answer to you, but we're going to look into this and get back, and then get back to them. And then actually get, get back, back to, to them. them. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, if you do that, then, you, and, and, and you establish that pattern, then, you know. You it, stay ahead of these things. Right. Yeah. And, and, but the way to end up in a dispute uh, is to ignore them. Uh, because uh, they, they, it just gets worse. Yeah. And, and, and for owners and for condo boards, if you ignore the disputes, it just results in a whole lot of disruption in the community. It costs the association money. It costs the whole, uh, unit owners money because if there is a lawsuit or uh, you know, some kind of dispute re resolution where attorneys have to get involved, the homeowners end up paying for it through their maintenance fees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all connected. It's, it's all connected. All connected. It, it's like a little ripple, like, you know, <laughs> you throw a stone and the water ripples, right? Yeah. And so, you know, you just want to make sure that, you know, these things don't blow up. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, it, and it, they do blow up. Yeah, they do. They do. And so, and I think that in, in instances where they do blow up and they do uh, grow, um, there, there are resources out there for condo associations to help them kind of mitigate some of these problems and issues that come up. And some of them, or two of them that we're going to talk about today is the mediation and arbitration process that many boards may or may not be aware of that we want to kind of expound on and kind of let them know that these resources are out there. But let's start with mediation. Why don't we define exactly what that is and how that can serve? Okay, uh, a, a condo association. A mediation is where um, uh, you engage, where, where the parties who are in, in the dispute, and, uh, and there, it, there is a provision in the condo statute in 514B, and that's 514B, I think it's 161, which is the uh, mediation statute. It is. And uh, what it does is it tells who can participate. And it used to be just the owners and the board members. Now it's the owners and the board members, and if you have board members who disagree with each other, they are also they can also be included in the mediation as well as uh, the um, uh, resident manager, the the, the uh, managing agents. So board members can also uh, participate in mediation within the board. Yes, because oh. you, okay, to give you an example. There are some, uh, there's, uh, th there is a uh, provision that talks about good con uh, rules of good conduct. I don't know what, what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I think and, I read that. And, and some boards have been adopting it. I myself think that, think that that's kind of like overdoing it because, you know, the boards have a fiduciary duty and you have a board president who's tasked under Robert's rules to control the meeting. Mm -hmm. So people get out of hand and start yelling and screaming. It's the chair's job to control right. the meeting yeah. and to say, hey, you, you know, stop it. Cut it out. Cut it out. If you can't be civil and respectful, 
I'm going to ask you to leave the meeting. You know, so, so, but instead of that, there are these rules of conduct. And I, I know of a situation where a board member who didn't agree with the rules of conduct uh, wouldn't sign the form or wouldn't vote for it, wouldn't vote for it, and was censured. And he ended up suing, not suing, but challenging the board. I recall an instance like that as well. And so, so the, yeah. you have instances where you have board members who disagree with other board members. Yeah. And so they were not included in the mediation statute. And two years ago, when we did revise it, we included it so that if you have board members who have a dispute you know, with other board members, they can be included in the mediation process. But what a mediation process is, is that uh, the, the people who have the dispute, they can contact um, uh, certain providers like D, uh, Dispute Prevention Resolution, DPR, or the Mediation Center of the Pacific, or there are certain mediators in town, professional mediators, and they are known to the, the Real Estate Commission uh, and who can refer you know, people to the mediators. And then, so the mediator is a, is a neutral, and there's two types of mediation. One is facilitative, and the other one is called mm. evaluative. Facilitative mediation means that the neutral is, you know, talks to both sides and tries to get both sides to come together. The neutral and, being the mediator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, to come to a solution that is, uh, works out acceptable to both. Mm -hmm. And evaluative mediation, where is where you've got the parties who come together, and the mediator is somebody with specific knowledge, and in this case, it would be a knowledge of the condo statute. Mm. Okay, so those, so in the evaluative mediation, yeah. you have somebody who's who has who has expertise in the, in, this in the statute, industry. and then he listens to both sides, and he render he or she renders an opinion, saying, "Oh well, you know, your case is strong on these points." weak on these points and mm. you know and so it tries and and what it does is it tries to uh tell them whether they've got a good case or a bad case and usually these um trained mediators are attorneys mm. who practice in condo law or retired judges oh who know so who should know, know what they're, they're doing yeah they know their stuff and, and so if, if you were one of the the disputants or the people who are disputing and you're you're coming and and you have a professional you know looking at both sides and basically telling you your your case really sucks. You know, maybe you <laughs> then better, you should probably rethink. Uh, you rethink this and your maybe position. yeah. Yeah. And 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 so so that's what evaluative mediation is. And but the whole task, the whole point of mediation is to have somebody, a third party, come in, mm -hmm. listen to both sides, mm -hmm. and to try to get them to agree to a solution that's going to be acceptable to both, so that the dispute gets resolved. Yeah. That's the whole point of it. Is to let's and you might not get everything you want, but you know most times you don't. When 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 you try to resolve something, you have to give a little bit, and the other side has to give a little bit. And fine, if it's something that you know might not be something that was you know number ten on your list, but if it was number six, yeah, you could live with that. Yeah, and 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 that's that's okay. And to me, the reason why this is why this type of remedy is so necessary for a condominium. In a condominium, I mean, in a lawsuit, if you have a lawsuit, you probably don't know that person really well, and that person doesn't live in your building. Right, and that person, that's not your neighbor. Right, it's not your neighbor. You don't see him in the elevator, you know? So it makes it kind of awkward if you're fighting, the person you're fighting with is in your building or in where you live. Mm. And, you know, so it's best, and because there's nothing you can do, because you're not gonna move, the other person's not gonna move, Right, you need to get it resolved because it's awkward. Yeah, yeah, it's awkward, and the dispute affects other people, right. the other neighbors, the people who don't want to take sides, right. right? Who want to just stay away from both of you because they know you're yeah. fighting with each other. You know, so it, may, it doesn't make for uh, a, a very uh, harmonious right. community, yeah. and so that's why it's in everybody's best interest to get these things resolved quickly and cheaply, mm -hmm. and with mediation. In recent years, we under the evaluative mediation, the state of Hawaii will subsidize it, which means that if you apply for, for uh, if you apply to any of these uh, contractors, and they have contracts with the state of Hawaii, and and you say I want to do evaluative me me mediation, then they will contact the DCCA, 
and make sure that your condominium is registered, and most, most of them most are. Most are, yeah. And um, you pay the first $375, and the state will subsidize the balance. That's huge. They're yeah. saying that they really want to help assist in these matters. Right. And, and the because... thing of it is, is that, you know, condo people, they shouldn't feel bad that it's being subsidized because it's not taxpayer money. It's not money from the general fund. The money that sits, that is used to subsidize the evaluative mediation, and we'll talk about arbitration later, but who, who subsidizes the dispute resolution, it comes from condo ed fund, a condominium education fund that was established about 30 years ago. And, oh, wow. uh, and, and it, it was because there was this huge dispute with the Marco Polo, and there was a lawsuit. And what happened in that case was the court found that the board president you had a very wealthy person who was living in the Marco Polo and the board president. They just happened to be neighbors in the of penthouse. <laughs> in the penthouse. And it started with a roof leak. And mm. because the owner didn't feel that the association was doing enough, enough to fix the roof, he was complaining and he had lawyers. And then the, the board president who lived next door to him used the, 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 her, her authority and, mm -hmm. and so there were dirty tricks both sides. Abuse of, yeah. And, and, and uh, that was the case where the carrier even walked away in the middle of the lawsuit. That the carrier? Had, the carrier, the insurance carrier walked away and said, we're out of here. And they had to end up That's suing. That's unusual, isn't uh, it? No, it, it's not. But they ended it's up not. suing the carrier because the car the, this is a DNO carrier. Yeah, aren't you obligated? Or? They are obligated to defend. But in the end, because of the shenanigans, I guess, that were going on, and it, it was in the newspapers. Oh. All, it was very bad. And, wow. uh, and in the end, the court found that the board president was, uh, had breached her fiduciary duty, and she was fined 75000 And the vice president was, this is over 30 years ago. Ouch. And the vice president was fined $65,000 for not stopping the board president, which uh, I, I happen to personally know the board president, and she sat on my Hawaii Council board. And oh. let me tell you, there's nobody who could tell her what to do. <laughs> so, right. you know, but anyway, because of that, the legislature kind of gathered us together because we had wholesale re resignations because board members found out that they could get sued and be personally liable because oh, there they, you go. Right, they, they, the court would not allow the insurance to pay the fines. Right? They had to pay it out of their own pocket. And so you had all this wholesale resignation, and the, the legislature so in walks the legislators said, to, said to, you know, this cannot happen yeah, again. Yeah. And so we are going to establish a fund to educate board members and owners and to promote dispute resolution so that lawsuits don't end up in court. Yeah, that's how these things happen, folks. Well, this is a good place for a break, so we're <laughs> going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Please come back and uh, join in the uh, conversation on arbitrations when we, come, when we come back. We'll educate you on that. So thank you. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground here on Think Tech Hawaii, and Think Tech Hawaii needs you. Please help us in our fall fund drive. Every dollar sustains us. Go to thinktechhawaii.com and click on the donation button or send your check to Think Tech Hawaii, 900 Fort Street Mall, Suite 888, Honolulu 96813. Your donation is tax deductible and deeply appreciated. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion with Jane. I think we left off uh, discussing the mediation process and the funding of, uh, of that or the subsidy right. that's, that's allowed. Right. And, I, and what I was play. trying to emphasize is that the people who use the subsidy should not feel bad because they're paying for it. And uh, like I said, 30 years ago, there was this lawsuit and the legislature decided that 
you know, we're going to be educating boards so that, you know, we could avoid dispute resolution mm. and, and that ends up in lawsuits in the, in the courts that cost so much money and cost, it wrecked havoc at the Marco Polo. At one time, nobody could sell the units because there were liens on the property. Oh, wow. It was, it was, it was just it was the that most, bad. it was very bad. And, That's um, a good history lesson. And, mm. and so the, and when it first started, it was a dollar and a quarter per unit for every condominium unit in the state of Hawaii. And yes, uh, biannual. Biannual, which is every other year. Yeah. Definitely. And 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 at that time, I mean, we we kind of uh, balked at that and said, you know, th that's unfair. It, they were going to set up a special fund to be regulated by the DCCA, and we said, yeah, it's going to be a dollar a quarter now, but twenty years from now, it's going to be a lot larger. And as of last year, it was ten dollars per unit every yeah, other year like everything else yeah every and you know so and and in fact in fact i have a good good news i got a call from a legislator about a month ago and T -T takashi ono is mm -hmm. head of oversight with the government and they were looking at these four special funds one of them was a condo education fund really and they found and i could have told them this they found <laughs> that there was a lot of money in the condo education fund two over 2.5 million dollars really that's amazing no wonder they can afford to subsidize well of course they want to help but, but the money is and, there and because because when he had when he did his investigation of these special funds what he found was the four funds that in question that they weren't spending it down yeah and so they he, they were collecting the money from condo owners but they weren't spending it down fast enough so for the next biennial session, which is, I think, um, uh, this coming year, 2020, mm -hmm. then they cannot, they have to waive it. Uh, they have to Completely. waive it. No, up to, uh, it, it can't, they can't collect more than $5 okay. per unit. So it's almost cut in half. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to uh, affect the fund. I mean, and you know, but they well, have a lot so of money. It's funded now, so 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 people should not can... feel bad about using the, right. the subsidy because it's money that condo owners have. It, they, it gets collected from condo owners, it gets put into a fund, and there's over two point five million dollars there. Wow, wow. Well, what are they doing to get the word out? It's if you go on their website, mm -hmm. the uh, the DCCA REC website, and you go to th if you. And search for mediation. Mm -hmm. They have a page. They, they have maybe two or three pages about mediation and arbitration, and it talks about evaluative mediation. It also talks about the subsidy. And, oh, I see. And if and if you call the the DCCA and say I want to do evaluative mediation, who is doing it? They will tell you. Uh, DPR, uh, Mediation Center of the Pacific, and there's Louis Chang, and there's other. I think Philip Nerney does it, but mm -hmm. they will give you the name and the contact information. Mm -hmm. They also have it uh, on the neighbor islands mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So it's statewide because it's they're collecting money. Yeah. State, and I can and, and being a board president, I can remember getting the bill from the DCCA and having to sign the check, you know, for the ten dollars for however many units in, in in our building. Yeah. And you know, so I remember uh, sending those out. Right. Yeah. That's what that's what it's all about, mm. and so you know people should take advantage of it. Yeah. That's what it's there for, yeah. and it's and the whole purpose is to avoid them going to court. Yeah, that's where we don't want the the, the disputes to go to. And I will tell you, as an attorney, I have personal knowledge. The judges hate condo cases, no. <laughs> and I had one district yeah. court judge tell me. You know, who, and she does a, a temporary restraining order. She says, why can't you people get along? Yeah. She says, I have all these, I, I spend hours hearing these cases and I can't believe the bad conduct or the, 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 the mean things that ha people do to each other. Yeah. And it, it's, it's awful. It, it, it's unfortunate. Like you said, you, you live, this is your home. Um, these are your neighbors. You want to promote, you know, a, a healthy environment. And right. You wanna, and, so, and, and that's why, like you stated earlier, it's, it's, it's imperative that boards listen. Right. Just listen, listen to homeowners. And the issue is not going to go away. Even if you give them an answer that they're not necessarily 100% happy with, at least you're listening. Right. 
and, and, and responding. And I think yeah, people uh, you know appreciate that. Yeah. And you know what they don't appreciate is being ignored. Yeah. Especially if they're paying maintenance fees, right? Yeah. They, they are part of the association. And they pay their maintenance fees, and it's like, well, geez, I asked a question. I think it's a reasonable question. I deserve an answer. Right. Or I'd like to see the board minutes. How come I can't see the board minutes? Yeah. You know, it's like simple things. It's simple things like that. Yeah. And so it's like, so, so give it to them. And, it, and if it costs the association money, the statute says you can charge. You know, right. you can, you, if, if they won't give you an email address, uh, you know, where you can send the stuff, then and you have to copy it. You incur a cost. Copy, you yeah, yeah, you are entitled fees. to charge, and so that's fair. Mm -hmm. And so you know, so it's not. So the issue is. So the answer is, do not say no when somebody wants a document. Yeah. You know, just yeah. give it to them. Yeah. And that'll you know prevent a, a lot of issues later on. Potentially. Because that's what, I don't know why, but over the years that I've been involved, there have been more disputes regarding document. Documents. Yes. You know, why can't my, why won't my association give me the contract? Yeah. The man, managing agent's contract. And it's like, well, uh, why do you want it? I mean, they can ask you why you want it, but you know, you, they have to eventually give it. And it's like, and it's probably because the homeowner it's probably mad at the resident manager mm -hmm. wants to know mm -hmm. uh, what you know what, what are we they're paying it, what, him yeah, and, and what, what but you're that's paying in the budget yeah I mean. and and you know but you know what what I've done is when people want things like that I, I just tell the our managing agent just give it to them if there's privacy information that redacted. has to be redacted yeah. Yeah, you don't want to give it. cell phone numbers or home addresses because you or don't social security or the social security yeah. because you don't want the the unit owners to be harassing. Right. You I mean because I mean it's okay to give them the contract, but you know some of them some of them just kind of go overboard. Yeah. And and you can't control that. So the whole way to do that is not to give them contact information. Right. And it's and you know we tell people if you if you're mad at the ma resident manager, complain to the board, complain to the managing agent. That's what your recourse is, and, and we're supposed to handle it. And if we don't handle it to your satisfaction, then they're in the unit owner's re, uh, recourse is to replace the board. Yeah, yeah. Right? There's a whole process for that. Right? Yeah, so that's good stuff, Jane. The, the mediation process can, it's typically not binding. It's right? not binding, but you know, if it's successful, mm. then you then get it. goes a, away. Yeah, it goes away. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, and so so and the, to to me that's more important right. than you know what you want is you you want the dispute to be resolved resolved so if it means talking to a third party neutral to help people work out because sometimes a third party can see things that you can't see that you can't or, see because you're so mad or didn't think about because you're clouded by anger in right. many cases yeah yeah so and. If it's not resolved, it can lend itself to our next topic of arbitration. Right, so and arbitration is, uh, is, is something like mediation, except with arbitration, a third party, which is the arbitrator, if you decide to do arbitration in the statute, the statute is 514B162. Mm. And, 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 and the way the statute is set up, you, you can demand mediation, and if they don't do mediation, you can then demand arbitration. You know, that's that's the step you're supposed to do. You don't have to do mediation. Are you it, saying if you, you don't the, the way the, the way it was set up, and you know when when you, when you decide on a so so called a, a, a dispute resolution scheme, the way it was originally set up was let's make them do mediation first, mm. and if they if they stonewall and don't do mediation, then do uh, arbitration, and with arbitration the statute says shall. Although the mediation statute says also shall, but you know uh, if you you do mediation first because mediation is somebody trying to make you come, you know bring come the together. parties together. Yeah. If you can't come together, arbitration is like a trial. Got it. Got okay. It. You go before a third party uh, who is an arbitrator, and it's usually a retired a judge. judge or a, uh, or an attorney. And you basically, you know, do your argument. You do a, a brief, you know, you set out the facts and you set out the law and you present it to him and, and you can do argument. And if you bring witnesses, you can do the, te you know, make the witnesses do testimony in front of the arbitrator. Sounds like a trial. Yeah, you would need a lawyer. Right. To it's, navigate that. Right. And, and 
in the end, the arbitrator makes a decision. Okay. And under the, um, the statute, uh, the, the current statute, it's non-binding. Arbitration? Arbitration is non-binding, which means that if you don't like the arbitrator's decision, you can file an appeal. And then it's a, uh, a trial de novo, which means you file an appeal to the circuit court and you start all over again. It's as if the arbitration never happened. De novo means you start over again. Oh, okay. Okay. okay? And that's why a lot of people don't do arbitration. Yeah. Because if the losing party is so upset and he wants to do an appeal, you start all over again. It's mm. like the arbitration never happened. De novo, wow. that's what de novo means. But last year, we, had, we got a statute, we got a bill passed that will allow parties to agree to binding arbitration. Okay, that's what I'm familiar with. I okay. didn't know that so, there but, was... but you can, But that, you have to agree to it. Okay. The statute says you need to agree, you know, both par par parties have to agree to binding arbitration. And then you, you get an arbitrator who listens to both sides and hears all the testimony and renders an opinion. Now, if you go through that process... The condo ed fund will subsidize it. Oh, at that level as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's got to be binding. But Bind if it's non-binding, it they won't. won't. They won't. But if it's binding, binding they If won't. you agree to binding arbitration and you pay for the first hour of the neutrals, which is, I, I, I think it's 375 or 400, but you, you only pay for the first hour, the condo ed fund will kick in after that oh, and wow. pay for the rest. Okay. All and right. see, that, that's to encourage people to, to do binding arbitration, right? right? Because yeah. if, you, if you agree to the so binding... it's pow. It's pow. <laughs> it's pow. For yeah. good, good, bad, or ugly, yeah. when you're done, it's pow. Yeah. yeah. Right? And yeah. for that, the state of... I mean, the, the condo ed fund will subsidize yeah. the cost of the uh, mediator, I mean, yeah. the arbitrator. Yeah. And, and that's something that's, that was brand new in... Uh, Last session. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So either process, if you will, is 100%, you know, the preference over just going straight to... Circuit court. Circuit court, lawsuits, and all this. These are the steps that you should take. But I think the bottom line is to avoid either scenario is to just talk to your neighbors and play nice in the sandbox yeah, right? Right. And, and try to live harmoniously. Right. Because um, that, that avoids a whole lot of yeah. stress. And yeah. I mean, because even though this is not in a courtroom or in a legal judicial proceeding type of, it's still stressful. Yeah. It's still very stressful. It still means Especially that, arbitration. Right. Arbitration is like a trial. Yeah. And, and so you will go, uh, but it's much faster. Than, than a court. I mean, you would go yeah. in and talk to the arbitrator, and depending on the complexity of the issue and how many witnesses you have, I mean, you could probably get a hearing date within weeks. Oh, well, we're out of time. We could talk about this forever, but yeah. thank you for joining us. Come back. We'll have Jane on again, and we'll just continue this discussion. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.